Is that an apple fritter you've got over there? Yeah, they all look amazing. I want them all, but I've got to choose, right? You call it choosing, but I call it not compromising. Now, you've done this whole SRE thing, right? You wouldn't want to have to make compromises on the job, right? Yeah, if you're talking about compromising for donuts, then I'm okay, I can deal with it. But uh, from an SRE perspective, I'm all team unified observability. And I want to have full stack visibility, all the traces on, rum and everything. I want the whole deal. But how do you pull that off, right? Because everybody I talk to, they have all these silos, teams with their own tools. They have completely different fiefdoms, if you like. How do you make that happen? Get everybody on the same page. Yeah, that's, that's tough, right? I mean, silos don't happen, you know, overnight. It's an accumulation of different tools that have been collected. You know, application teams, they have their own set of tools that they prefer. And then you get into logs, there's another, and then network observability. So it's all accumulation of a period of time that you have all these different tools that you, you end up in a, in a siloed situation. So you've got SREs and they've got all these siloed tools and siloed data. What is the business impact of having that? You're taking me back to my operations days when I used to be on call. Oh, it was tough. I would get call at 11 p.m. and then I would resolve the issue and then come back and again, 1.30, I would get another, you know, pager and it used to be very, very chaotic. I would join in and get into a bridge line. People are staring at you. you they're looking for the problem to be resolved soon and you're like, trying to troubleshoot, log into different servers, trying to identify, oh, where is the issue happening and so on. And the silo data and these different tools that you have to navigate through, it's having an impact on your MTTD and MTTR metrics, right? The silo did not happen, you know, overnight or anything. It's just something that's accumulated over a period of time by you know, teams picking up different tools. I think they call that swivel chair, right? Is a common term I hear in the industry because you, uh, you're you looking at one tool and then you have to swivel your chair around and go and look at another tool. It's just adding an accumulation of what I like to call paper cuts to the process, right? Which increases the amount of time and obviously the customer impact. How do we solve that problem? The most important piece there is having the standard format. Whatever tools you pick, the interoperability is very, very important. The standard format is, is the most important thing here. And also this brings me back to this example, Comcast. They had like 400 terabytes of data per day. You know, mm -hmm. you talk about scale, you know, that's a massive scale. And they had like so many different teams uh, using uh, observability. They had like 50,000 bills per day. So with the idea of being able to like having this unified observability, they were able to like see what, whenever there was a release that happened, they were able to see has a release cost a production performance improvement or is there some sort of a, you know, degradation happening and so on. Unified observability is totally doable, especially, you know, when it comes to scale and it definitely helps with the performance and what they can provide for the, you know, end customers. So I'm all, I'm all unified observability team. Yeah, how about that, right? There's no compromises observability. And on that point, I'm not gonna compromise on my donut selection anymore. I am gonna dive into one of these apple fritters. I hope the no compromise observability is as sweet as that. <laughs> oh yeah, it is. <laughs>